every time y'all do some shit and leave me out, it gets up. Carter has something on you. Then you need to get something on him. You kill me, your life is over. Monet is dead because of you! We decide what happens next. Get the So we are finally here, the final episode of Power Book 2 Ghost, a show which has definitely had a lot of highs and definitely had a lot of lows over the years. But will they deliver what the fans have been asking for? Will they be able to close off all of these storylines as well as potentially set up whatever's coming next after Ghost? Well, we're about to find out. So as usual in this breakdown, we're going to run through a quick preview of what we can expect Heading into the series finale of Ghost, we're going to run through some exclusive images, run through the trailer again in terms of the Tahada's revenge, how Tariq can deal with Detective Carter, will Davis McLean survive, will Effie escape to California, and also what happens with Braden Weston. And with it being the last episode, I'm also going to touch on the subject of of course, the ghost man himself, James St. Patrick. But first, let's take a look at the title and synopsis for the final time for Power Book 2 Ghost. Now the title of episode 10 is Ghost in the Machine, and the synopsis reads, The epic conclusion to this chapter of power. So, in terms of the episode title, I know a lot will be thinking about Omari Hardwick, could he really be returning? In my personal opinion, I don't think so. I do think they could be cooking something in the background. Whether he returns as an alive character or as a hallucination, who knows. I think it makes more sense for him to come back as a narrator for Power Origins. But, the world of TV is definitely a funny place. And we have spoken about it before, in terms of how the internet really would break if Omari Hardwick was to return as Ghost. At this moment in time, I just don't see how they do it, but let's wait and see. Now in terms of the episode title, I think this is the episode where Tariq really begins to turn it up a notch. In essence, Tariq tapping into the Ghost in his machine. Over the past week, we've all spoken our minds on how Tariq St. Patrick really needs to fix up, but this is the episode where I am expecting him to put the wheels in motion be more strategic and be smarter. He's been punked around for way too long, but this is where he does have to fix up. So we've got him holding Detective Carter captive, which I do think will be at the beginning of episode 10. Episode 10 will probably pick up right from where they left off, and he has a real dilemma. Not only will Detective Carter get the jump on him at some point, where Braden will come to his rescue, the CCTV footage of him killing Zion is a huge problem. This is where I do think Effie will play her part, at some point in episode 10, we are going to see Effie in Carter's home, where she's looking through his laptop. So, will she be able to find the CCTV footage, and perhaps something that they can kind of get leverage over Carter? We've already spoken about Tariq needing to find leverage over Carter, which could potentially be him killing Kamal Tate. I think that's the only thing that would make Carter think, shit, these St. Patrick's don't fuck around after all. But, Effie needs to do this not just for Tariq, but also herself. She's got her acceptance from Stanford, and her dream is literally in the palm of her hands, it's in touching distance. But it also seems so far away at the same time, because there are still so many hurdles to overcome in episode 10. So when it comes to Effie, does she make it to Stanford and escape? Or could she potentially be one of the big casualties in episode 10? Now in terms of Detective Carter, one of the exclusive images that they did release was of him being back at the precinct. His facial expression looks a bit shocked, so let's see who he could potentially be so, let's see who could potentially be in his office, and also what he's having to deal with when he gets back. But, the fact that they've released this image, they're making no secret that Carter will escape from this particular situation. Or, will Tariq let him leave? Now, why would Tariq let him leave? Maybe he genuinely does have enough leverage over Carter, where he's the one in control. Maybe Tariq's managed to find the CCTV footage of him killing Zion, with Effie's help, and also the leverage that turns Carter into Tariq's puppet for once. I do think there has to be a reason why Tariq's let him go, so let's wait and see. Now we've also got Tariq in a warehouse of some sort, with Drew in the background, looking like he's the one calling the shots. And after Monet's death, I do think they need to get together with the Tahadas, come up with a plan and work together. At the end of the day, they have the same goals at this moment in time, despite what they've been through in the past in terms of lies, manipulation and betrayal. They have to put all of that to one side, stick together and stick to whatever plan they create, which I'm going to come to in just a moment. But first, this was another exclusive image that was released. Just like we saw after Lorenzo's death where the Tahadas came together to have this meeting, we're going to get something very similar, except this time, 
All that is left of the Tahadas is Kane, Crew, and Diana. Monet is dead because of you. No one's coming for you. every time y'all do some shit and leave me out. It gets fucked up. Now the initial problem that they're gonna have is Drew's gonna throw the blame in Kane's direction, and Diane is also gonna say they're the ones that's gonna create the plan. Unfortunately, they can't do this without Kane. He's the muscle and he's the man who's going to take the lead in a lot of these situations that we are going to see across episode 10. However, what is the plan? Earlier in the week, I mentioned one of Noma's biggest weaknesses that they have to look to target. Even though she is a civilian, that has to be Anya Covington. At some point we're going to see Anya and Noma in a really heated debate, where we can only assume Anya's finally figured out who her mother is and potentially how she had her father killed. So, this relationship will be in turmoil in episode 10, which could potentially give the Tahadas the edge to pounce. I also wonder whether Noma's organisation begins to cripple from beneath her, where she loses her bodyguards and her protection, because we do hear her screaming, cowards, as she stands all alone in this mansion. So I wonder, one by one if everybody is starting to turn on Noma, realising she's lost control and she's basically not worth working for or protecting. So that's just a thought. Now one thing we do know for sure is, they will be at an airstrip at some point in episode 10, which may or may not be the moment Noma decides she needs to flee the states. The government contracts is no more. A drug organisation in New York is also done. The Russians are dead. Effie's looking to go to California. She's already killed Obi and now Kane's against her. So could she flee the states, either back to Nigeria or back to London? I do think we have to keep that perspective in mind heading into episode 10. Even though I think 99% of us believe Noma has to go, there is a small chance she may not. She might actually get on that plane and make it out of the States. I'm personally hoping she doesn't, but it definitely isn't something we can't overlook. Now while we're here at the airstrip, what happens with Kane, Drew and Diana? Because it does look like there will also be heavy law enforcement presence. It seems like Drew and Diana will have handcuffs slapped around their wrist, but Kane is someone who definitely won't back down. They've probably gone to this airstrip to get revenge on Noma, and we know what he's gonna do. However, I did raise a point about how in the very last frame of the trailer, we do see him taking another bullet to the arm. Whether that's in the gunfight with law enforcement or Nomar's goons, or potentially both, let's wait and see. But will he get caught and will he go down like Monet? That's the question. I personally don't think so, or at least I'm hoping he doesn't. I really want Kane to survive because Woody McLean really is an amazing actor, and I think he can do so much more in the power universe. I do have others in my death predictions for sure for episode 10, but let's wait and see when it comes to Kane Tahada, I'm hoping he does survive. Now where are we with Davis McLean? We've got an exclusive image of him standing in front of who we can only assume is the bar committee. In episode 1, we learned his law license was suspended thanks to Jenny Sullivan. And what do we think? Does his law license get reinstated or does he get disbarred? I personally think he definitely loses his law license, which finally makes him crash out. I think with Davis McLean, over the last few seasons, they've slowly been chipping away at his character. They took away Theo Rollins, his wife filed for divorce, he also had to downgrade from his brand spanking new office. After the war between Noma and the Tahadas, there's also going to be nothing left for him in the streets, there's going to be basically a power vacuum, and now he could be on the verge of losing his law license. So I do have Davis McLean how are my death predictions in episode 10. I genuinely think he could be another big death because of how he has nothing more to lose. It would be quite something if we do actually see him going out protecting Tariq. He always said he had a soft spot for the underdog, so let's wait and see, that's just a little prediction. But just like Joe Proctor, I don't think Davis McLean survives. Now what about Braden Weston? He's someone who has had Tariq's back over the years, but very similar to Davis McLean, the writers have slowly been chipping away at his character too. He's lost his family's investment firm, he's been disowned by the Westons, he's also lost Elle, and he also continues to lose control and get high on his own supply as well as making a few mistakes, with Steve being one of them. So, where do they end Brayden's character arc? In the world of power, nobody is safe. But I do hope they keep some realism within episode 10, and send one or two of these guys to jail. And Brayden is definitely up there as one who could potentially go to prison. I personally don't have him dying. I would be quite shocked if Brayden were to die. I think jail is kind of the most logical outcome for Brayden Weston. But then again, power always makes us look in one direction, and then they completely flip the chessboard upside down. So who knows? I'm expecting a few more twists and turns in episode 10, that's for sure, and definitely one or two more very shocking what the fuck moments. But with that being said, that's a breakdown of where we are in terms of heading into Power Book 2 Ghost Season 4, Episode 10, the final episode. 
It's an episode where I'm expecting definitely another major death. I think Davis McLean is high on my list, but could there be another? Could one of the Tahadas or Effie join him, if he does go? And what surprises could they have in store for us? Will they give us any clues in terms of the next power show? Drop all your thoughts and predictions down below in the comment section. And as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.